So as we discussed, NASA's Artemis 1 mission is finally over. It's kind of surreal, especially given the fact that we attempted to see the launch back this summer in August, uh, leading into September. Multiple launch attempts were scrubbed. If you want to go check out those episodes, I did have a lot of fun, even given the fact that I didn't get to see the launch. Uh, it was a really, really great time. Met some good people and really got to soak in the experience. And obviously, while it would have been great to have seen the launch, it was a spectacular, spectacular sight. And even a hurricane almost ruined the uh, the mission with the, the rocket on the launch pad. But NASA's Artemis mission has returned home after 1.4 million miles. The Navy and NASA teams helped recover uh, the spacecraft after it splashed down off the Pacific, off the coast of Baja, California, and the USS Portland was there to pick up the spacecraft. Now, we have here this wonderful uh, swag Orion capsule. This is uh, from Lockheed Martin. It's a little foam capsule here. But it's a great demonstration of exactly what we saw on the mission. The capsule, it was docked together during launch with the service module. We talked about that last episode. If you want to see what the service module did, the combination of the two spacecraft made it possible for humans. They were testing a lot of those systems. The two of them also helped to make it such a fuel-efficient and effective mission. But to return the capsule and eventually the human beings back to Earth, those two have to separate. Very similar to the brother mission, the Apollo program that first went to the moon, the Artemis program, and the Orion spacecraft is essentially attempting the same thing, to detach the service module from the actual command module, the capsule here, and then the capsule will send the humans back to Earth. And the most important thing, the heat shield, is what's going to help them re-enter the atmosphere. Are you looking to stuff someone's stocking this holiday season? Well, thanks to our sponsor, Manscaped, we have the best tools to offer for either yourself or if you're buying a gift for somebody else. Manscaped has everything that you need for your holiday needs, whether it's getting the Platinum Package 4.0, it has loads of little presents, perfect for stocking stuffers. What's better than the gift of good hygiene and a few laughs? Manscaped offers a handful of their liquid formulation, shampoos, body washes, upstairs and downstairs deodorant, gels, exfoliants, absolutely everything that they could need to keep it clean. And again, one of the things we love about Manscaped is that it makes manscaping and men's hygiene so much simpler. I mean, you can just check right here. My beard had gotten pretty crazy. I uh, had been sick. Had been, the holidays just let it grow, and it got pretty wild. But I was able to tame the beast with the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. Not only do they give you the tools that you need, they help make the experience of men's grooming easier and simpler so that you don't have to overthink it. You can just grab your gear and go. But there's also things like the Shears 2.0 if you're looking for a full kit for nail care with scissors, clippers, tweezers, and a file for the traveling man. There is the new Persevere Cologne, which is brings a light, breezy, woodsy feel and gives that fresh tree scent even after the holidays are over. They also have come out with their body buffer, which if you're still using a loofah that holds all that bacteria, gross, you can throw that out and get this new body scrubber, the body buffer, it feels smoother and acts tougher. And then, of course, like we talked about before, the Lawnmower 4.0 is my go to. It is the electric razor with advanced skin safe technology. It's a life changer and known for reducing nicks and cuts. Manscaped is here to make holiday shopping a blast by giving products that they'll love and make them laugh at the same time. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code. Space at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code SPACE, and Manscaped is the perfect gift that will be the holiday's biggest hit. So, thank you, Manscaped, for being a sponsor. Really appreciate the partnership we have with them, and makes a great gift for the man in your life. Might even be you. <laughs> it's okay to take care of yourself. So, manscaped.com, 20% off free worldwide shipping, code word SPACE. Let's get back to the show. Now, 
Orion re-entered the atmosphere at 40,000 kilometers per hour, 25,000 miles per hour for us here in the U.S. Now that's blazing fast, and the heat shield was able to ablate the heat. That's one of the great things about the heat shield technology that's been developed. It's not necessarily a new technology. Apollo, the space shuttle, all used heat shield technology. Starship is developing uh, heat shield tiles that can be replaceable over time, so it can be a reusable thing. Uh, They are still developing that because obviously that cannot fail. (laughs) That has to have enough margin and enough uh, redundancy, as we call it, to make it so that there is no issues like we had during the space shuttle era. But what's different about the Orion capsule is this skip re-entry, which was brand new and the first time this was tested. Now, the re-entry speed of 25,000 miles per hour is also a first. The, the, the highest re-entry of a human-rated spacecraft, the heat shield did its job. But one of the reasons, it's not necessarily that the heat shield technology has progressed so far that we just put a new heat shield on there and we were able to achieve that kind of uh, slowdown in speed so that the friction hitting the atmosphere didn't destroy the thing. Now, granted, it has developed since the Apollo era, but the skip re-entry was the re- key, real key here. And it's it's apparently not a new technique. This is something that was, uh, as far, far as a physics perspective, was available to them during the Apollo years. What was not available to them was the computing power and the autonomous systems that could help make the adjustments for something like this. Now, from a physics perspective, why the skip reentry is so important, we're going to go into this Time article here that is written by Jeffrey Kluger. We will have the article here available on this episode. Just like most of the things we talk about here in the episode, they will be in the description for each podcast, whether it's on YouTube, Apple Spotify, podcast, Spotify, wherever it is, you can always look up more if you want. But the skip re-entry, the article states, re-entering the atmosphere from Earth orbit is a relatively easy thing, a matter of firing retro rockets and slowing the spacecraft's velocity below the 28,160 kilometers or 17,500 miles per hour necessary to maintain orbit. That is the speed that the International Space Station takes as it orbits the Earth so that it can stay in orbit. After that, the ship basically falls from the sky. So they had to shed roughly 7,500 miles per hour from re-entry. As it says here, returning from the moon is a different matter. In order to re-enter the atmosphere safely, the the ship must aim for a keyhole in the sky just 24 kilometers or 15 miles wide. That sounds like a mighty big target, but if the earth was the size of a basketball and the moon was the size of a baseball, and there, the two were placed 6.7 or 22 feet, uh, 6.7 meters or 22 feet apart. The relative translunar distance at that scale, the re-entry target would be no thicker than a sheet of paper. Miss it, and enter too steeply, and the spacecraft would not survive the heat of re-entry. One was a very early attempt at a Mars mission, and the other was a improperly used unit conversion. Miss it and enter too shallowly, and the spacecraft will simply skip off the atmosphere and bounce back into space. Now, the Apollo re-entries were not by any means uh, a fun thing. Although those astronauts were pretty crazy, who knows, they may have enjoyed it. But 6.8 Gs is definitely not something that's fun and unfortunately is necessary if all you're doing is re-entering the atmosphere and using the heat shield to slow down. Now, Artemis 1, using the skip re-entry, basically what it does, or what it did uh, this past week, was it plunged to an altitude of 61,000 meters or 200,000 feet, 38 miles, and it basically rolled 180 degrees after it did that so that the future astronauts who were sitting straight up inside would now be upside down, and it would change the center of gravity of this spacecraft. And anyone who's tossed anything that is uneven in weight and seen it go up, you can tell that the center of gravity change can make a big difference, especially in the trajectory of the orbit itself. And so by doing that, by changing the center of gravity, by doing this skip procedure where they turn the spacecraft 180, it's not shallow enough for re-entry to go through the atmosphere, but enough so that it actually goes back up to 99,000 meters or 325,000 feet 
61 miles going back into space. And with that little parabolic maneuver, you've now made re-entry into two parts. The first one shedding off speed, the second one making a more gradual hop back into space at slower speeds, which then allows the G-forces to drop from 6.8 to 4 and reduces the amount of temperature load on the heat shield, which basically allows the material science to do what it's supposed to do. And so we can use the margins, the extra safety that NASA builds in as just that, extra safety. So they don't have to stress the spacecraft out as much by just doing a simple maneuver. So the skip reentry is really a, a valuable tool for the future. And I, I love things like this where we can make minor adjustments to over time make all of this better, right? If we're these are the right types of things that NASA is working on and doing and showcasing that is ultimately in the long term of, of things make it so that flight can be more routine. You know, that's one of the great things about the Apollo era and Gemini and Mercury before it, that these were the people that put their lives on the line to show us what's possible. And as we've gotten now to this next stage, 50 years later, uh, we can see that Things are getting better and better for the people flying there, which is going to open things up for more science and life to occur instead of the entire mission being entirely about surviving. The more that we can make things automatic, just like we do with flying through the sky and airplanes, uh, those started off as complete R&D flights, then they became military devices, and then over time they became something that Anyone could get on at any time of day by just paying for a ticket and traveling essentially anywhere in the world. Now, one day, the hope is that we'll get there. But this test, this skip reentry is really cool. If you want to learn more about it, we've got this article here. Again, this time article goes a little bit more into it altogether. And it's by Jeffrey Kluger, so thank you for that. That was uh, December 8th before the mission happened. So that's the Artemis 1 update. The mission has succeeded, the Orion capsule is on its way back to the Cape, and it's an amazing time. So if you have any favorite moments, please let us know on social media, Today in Space Podcast, on Facebook, we have our Facebook page there, Today in Space Pod on Instagram and Twitter, and Today in Space on TikTok. Email us, Today in Space Podcast at gmail.com. 